while ago. Very happy to meet you again for the fifth Sunday. For the fifth Sunday of the ordinary time. The fifth Sunday we will speak, we will use again Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 to 16. We will use again Matthew, 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 the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. How many passages? 13, 14, 15, 16. Only four verses, imagine. And in those four verses, we will speak about two sacraments. The sacrament of the holy orders, the chosen one, the chosen for something important, verse 13. And the sacrament of matrimony, the seventh passage with verse 14 to 16. So, two sacraments are inside this little passage. The passage given by the church for the fifth Sunday in ordinary time. I show you the cross there, the wooden cross, because this passage is at the beginning, Matthew, chapter 5 in Matthew. We are at the beginning and we are in the program of God for Jesus to be realized while he is on earth. Divided in seven parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven parts. The crowd divided in seven parts. But there is also a bar. In the section number two. And that's where we are today. We are here, just under this bar. Why? Because if you take your Bible and you read it, you will see that this passage is just after the Beatitudes. Just after the Beatitudes, the ten Beatitudes given by Jesus. And if the passage is after, it means that there is a success already made there. If Jesus realized this and this, well, who will be saved? And these are the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are those who are gentle, obedient to the Holy Spirit, but blessed are those who hunger and thirst, but blessed are those who are merciful, blessed are the pure heart, Blessed are those who work for peace in the sacrament of matrimony. Sacrament of matrimony to work for peace. Well, we have the sacrament of matrimony here. And we have the sacrament of holy orders. Holy orders for pure heart. So, if we succeed to put all those beatitudes in our life, we are saints. In the early church, the people of the church 
founded by Saint Matthew, by Saint Mark, by Saint Luke, by Saint Peter, by Saint John. They are, they were called saints. In the time of Saint Paul, people in their churches, the churches that they were founding, they were called saints because they were teaching the beatitude and people were taking the beatitude in their heart. Okay? Now that is the goal of Jesus to put the beatitudes in the life of the people. Okay? And the beatitudes, they are in line with the the arms, the beatitude in the arms. Jesus takes the beatitude, teaches the beatitude, and says, I want those people, I want you people to be saints. So that is where we are now. So imagine that we are all disciples of Jesus, you and me, and those of your family, we are disciples of Jesus. We are called saints. We are called saints. We are Catholics. Okay? So, what is happening? If we are saints, the passage of today will be just here. Okay? Just here, the passage that follows this in the plan given by Father God to Jesus is this one, is this verse 13. How do we call, how does God call us? Okay, I will read for you this Verse 13. Okay, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. You are the saints of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. You are the saints of the earth. Thank you, Jesus, for making us saints of the earth. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, if the salt loses its taste, if we sin, and we remain in sin. Okay? If we sin and remain in, in, in sin, we, we have lost our taste. The salt has lost its taste. How can its saltiness can be restored? How can we restore our saltiness when we are a sinner, when we have sinned? Oh, we know we have to go to confession. We have to eat the body and drink the blood of Christ. Okay? So, uh, it is no longer good for anything but it is thrown out and trampled, trampled on their feet, on their foot. Okay? The salt is no good if there is no salt in it. So, what does Jesus want you and me to be? He wants me, he wants me, he wants you to be what the Father God asked him to be.
to make us. He has came to make us salt. The salt of the earth. The saints of this world. Amen. So that is for, for, for the sacrament of holy, holy orders. He wants, Jesus wants you and me to be holy. Okay? And he, and he wants us to be in the order. Which order? The order of Melchizedek. Those who take the bread and drink the cup. Okay? Bread and wine. That's what we have in the Eucharist. Okay? So only orders. We are there. We are not necessarily needed to be come priests to be in the holy orders to be saints in the church to be in the order of Melchizedek okay the Mel Melchizedek have a heart to give Moses bread and wine God Jesus gives his body and blood drink the mass. Okay, so that is for the sacrament of holy orders in verse 13. Be the salt. What is the sacrament of matrimony? 14 and 16. What is the sacrament of matrimony? Linking two people together. Okay, but for what reason? For a goal to achieve. Why did Jesus die on the cross? He died for verse 14, 16, 15, 16. Okay, for matrimony to make us what? Let me read the passage for you. You are the light. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one 
after lighting a lamp, put it under a bushel market, basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light Let your light shine before others. Shine before others. So that they may see your good deeds, your good works. And give glory to your Father in heaven. So, what is, what is, what is? Must be body to be the light for the world. Why? Because the matrimony is a kind of wedding with God. Baptism is a grace that changes our mortal life into life consecrated to God, dedicated to God, work so that people see your good words and give glory to our Father. So, we are children of God and the sacrament of matrimony will be the grace for me, for you, for me rather, for you, a Christian in the world, in the church, will be the grace to hold on your faith, to hold on the light all your days, all the days of your life. Okay? So that is the grace of the sacrament of matrimony to hold firmly on our mission. Our mission is to be placed on the lampstand to be visible to the others husband and wife will not have to hide their love to one another because they are married in the church amen they have to show to the people that they are married and they are doing works together, growing their children, make their children grow in front of their Father God. Amen. See you next Sunday.